God's ideal world. Jesus clearly foretold of his return, yet he added that no one knew of the day of his return, Matthew 24, 36. Nevertheless, we can deduce from the scriptural verse, surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets, Amos 3, 7, that God will surely reveal all secrets about the second advent to his prophets before he carries out his work. Accordingly, God will certainly give prophecies to those faithful believers who are in the light. We call this, we call the time of Christ's second advent the last days. As it was already explained in eschatology, we are living in the last days today. We can thus understand that today is truly the time of Christ's return. We can thus conclude that the period of the Second Advent began soon after the end of the First World War. Many of us have read the Bible with a preconceived notion that Jesus will come on the clouds, Matthew 24, 30-31. If Jesus were to return literally on the clouds of heaven, however, would he not readily be accepted and honored even by the sin-ridden world? Jesus foresaw that at the Second Advent, when he is born in the flesh, he is likely to be persecuted and condemned as a heretic. This is why he foretold, but first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Luke 17:25. Also in Luke 18:8, 8, Jesus said, "When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth?" Hence, the second advent of Christ will take place through his physical birth on earth. Based on such passages as Revelation 7.4, Matthew 10.23, and Matthew 16.28, some Christians expect that Christ will come again among the Jewish people. But in Matthew 21.33-43, Jesus clearly conveyed that he would not come again among the Jewish people. God will take away the mission previously entrusted to them and give it to another people who can produce its fruit upon Christ's return. Therefore, the chosen people after Jesus' crucifixion are not the descendants of Abraham, but rather the Christians who have inherited the faith of Abraham. Revelation 7.2.4 indicates that the seal of the living God will be placed on the foreheads of the 144,000 in the east where the sun rises. Revelation 14.1 says that these chosen ones will accompany the Christ at his return. We can thus infer that the nation which will inherit the work of God and bear its fruit for the sake of the second advent is in the east. Since ancient times, the nations in the East have traditionally been considered to be the three nations of Korea, Japan, and China. Japan entered the period of the Second Advent as a fascist nation and severely persecuted Korean Christianity. China at this time was a hotbed of communism and would become a communist nation. Thus, both nations belonged to Satan's side. Korea then is a nation in the east where Christ will return. As a nation to which the Messiah returns, Korea had to meet the following qualifications. 1. To become the object partners of God's heart, we must first walk a path of blood, sweat, and tears. Hence, the miserable history of the Korean people was the path required of the chosen people of God. Such a nation must be a people of goodness, the homogenous Korean people rarely invaded other nations. The Korean people are by nature endowed with a religious character. They have evinced a strong desire to worship God and always revered the virtues of loyalty, filial piety, and chastity. The Korean people, number two, have believed in the prophecy that the righteous king will appear and found a glorious and everlasting kingdom in their land. This messianic idea was revealed through the Chonggom Nok, a book of prophecy written in the 14th century Korea. Among the faithful of every religion in Korea are those who have received revelations that the founders of their religions will return to Korea. Revelations and signs are being given to spiritually attuned Christians 
testifying to the second coming of Christ in Korea. They are sprouting in profusion like mushrooms after a rain. Hence, many are receiving clear revelations that the Lord will come to Korea. If human beings had not fallen, we would have formed one global family like a body with God as a head. Then there never would have risen a profusion of tongues unintelligible to one another. If we are to realize the ideal world of one global family which can honor the returning Christ as our true parent, surely our languages must be unified. If Christ does indeed return to Korea, the Korean language will become the mother tongue for all humanity, and all people will have to speak it. All of humanity will become one people and use one language, thus establishing one global nation under God. This ends our principal lecture, and I will conclude by reading an excerpt from President Hak Chahan's speech to world leaders. From President Hak Chahan's speech, Women are leaders of the ideal world. The mission of the Messiah, the Savior, is to teach how to liquidate the sinful history, which has been tangled up after human beings had fallen away from the paths of true parents, true husband and wife, and true children. Today I declare to the heaven and earth that my husband, President Sam Myung Moon, is the one who has been pioneering the path of true parents and the Messiah all his life. As you know very well, despite the severe persecution by the evil world, my husband, President Moon, has been pioneering the future of humanity by revealing the purpose of God's creation and the original sin committed by the human ancestors. His teaching, The Divine Principle, affirms that the ideal of the Second Advent aspired to by the founders of all religions, be it the return of Maitreya, the Awakened One, a new Confucius or Jesus, is realized in the advent of one Messiah as the true parent of mankind, through which the religions will be unified. However, this advent will not occur as a return on the clouds of Jesus who died 2,000 years ago, as Christians believe, but rather in the form of the birth of the one who inherits the mission of Jesus. So far, no one has been able to fight against sexual promiscuity and adultery, which have been corrupting mankind. But now the truth of hope that can thoroughly resolve this problem has emerged in our age in Korea. This truth, brought to light by the true parents, will be the light of all mankind to unify South and North Koreas and build the world of peace. Let us all embrace this truth and put it into the sinful world, which has been tormenting us all throughout history, and as fighters build the world of unification, overflowing with freedom, peace, and happiness. Thank you.